Our first step is to unleash the brake by removing the curved so-called brake noodle from its holder. Sometimes it's a little tricky. You need to push the rubber forward, pull the noodle back, See if we can release it. There we go. Next, using a 10 millimeter ox wrench, we'll loosen the bolt that holds the cable. The cable runs through this. I'll have to go ahead and cut that to remove the cable. We can pull out the cable, take off the rubber holder, we can get a good idea what the end of the noodle looks like and how we had to pull this back enough so we can lift it up and out. Now we're going to turn the barrel adjuster and the lock ring such that they're both open to the cable. There we go. So we can pull the cable through. Our next step I'm going to close the brake handle. When we pull this down, on the other side is a small groove through which we'll pull the cable. Now we can remove the cable and the housing. We'll remove the noodle some people will clean this with degreaser. I think this is pretty well shot and we'll go ahead and replace that. Our next step will be to remove from the ends the ferrules. We remove the ferrules at both ends so we can, get, we can see where they go on. We can use the piece of previous brake housing to measure for our new brake cable. Some will use regular diagonal wire cutters. I find they park cutters to work extremely well. We'll line that up with the length of cable housing we have here. You'll notice our uh, brake housing is not completely round. We can round that out with our Careful use of our crimpers. There we go. You can use a pick or a small nail to open up the end of the housing. And finally, there's a small little rough edge. And we'll go ahead and File that smooth. Here's a fast way to use that file. Okay, looks very good. When replacing cabling, make sure you have the right type. This is brake housing cable. Specifically for brakes has a woven that piece of metal going round in a circular motion all the way down the cable as we can see on this stripped end which gives it strength. If because of the poor condition of the old ferrules and the noodle we're going to replace those. We'll take our new section of cable. We'll use a five millimeter ferrule at one end slides on. Some people will crimp this with their wire cutter crimper so it doesn't fall off and we'll replace the old noodle with what we call a flexible noodle. It is pre-greased besides being Teflon coated and we'll go ahead now and replace the brake wire. 
Some brakes will come with two different ends depending on the type of brakes you're using. This is what we took out over here, so we'll need to cut off this end and install the brake cable. Hopefully you can see that in the brake handle itself there is a groove where we're going to place our brake cable. We'll line it up with the lock nut and the barrel adjuster. We're going to slide, or there's a groove here, we're going to slide in our brake cable and pull it back, let go. Now we can turn this a little bit so it doesn't fall out. And we're ready to install this in its housing. The brake cable is lined with a Teflon lining. Uh, most mechanics will tell you to put it on dry. Some will suggest a very fine lubricant, uh, such as a chain lubricant, finish line dry or an extra special Teflon lubricant. Uh, we're not going to do that in this case. We'll just go ahead and put on the cable uh, into the cable housing. Go ahead and pull it tight. Turn the barrel adjuster up by the brake handle all the way in and then turn it out about maybe three or four turns. This will allow us to adjust the brake pads if they're too tight down below we can turn this uh, clockwise in so the brake pads don't rub, we can turn it out a little bit more if we need to get the brake pads a little bit closer. Interestingly, uh, we don't need a ferrule at the end where it enters the noodle. The end, middle end of the noodle acts as a ferrule itself and secures the housing so it doesn't bend. Put on the, new, the rubber uh, cover, dust cover. We'll go ahead and insert that. into our housing and then we'll insert the other end of the cable. There's a small hole here which is difficult to see. We'll insert the cable through that. Now we can either use a fourth hand to tighten the cable or we can just do this ourselves. Pulling these together. Let's get this up and in. There we go. Pushing on the brakes and pulling the cable well they just about touch the rim. And then with our box wrench we can go ahead and tighten the bolt on the brake arm. At this point it looks like the brake pads are rubbing on both sides of the rim. So let's take our barrel adjuster and turn it in, that is clockwise, to give us a little bit more room between the brake pad and the rim. Now we get a nice rotation. The, the idea is to keep adjusting the brakes until we pull about halfway back the pads will engage the rim. If we notice it engaging too soon, we're going to have a sudden break and go over the handlebars. If it pulls back all the way to the handle of the handlebars, we're not going to get enough braking power to be able to stop us as we need it. Now you may notice a problem that the brake pads don't seem to be centered on the rim. That is, when we turn this, we have plenty of clearance on this side and it seems to be hitting over here. Well what controls the centering are these two screws right down here. These screws increase the tension 
on the spring to move the pad away if we turn them in. If we unscrew them, that will decrease the tension on the spring and move the pad towards the rim. So we're getting, it's hitting on this side. We need to increase the tension over here by screwing this screw in. Let's give it a try. Better. Screw it in a little further. This will increase the spring action here and move both of these towards the side. We can also loosen the tension on this spring and move the pad a little bit closer. There we go. It seems to be clearing on both sides. You can work with these a little bit to make sure that it clears well. Now we're ready to cut our cable. Would we want to cut it? Well, there's a little lip here that'll hold the cable behind the brake and out of the way. So we'll cut it somewhere down in here. Now we'll add our end cap so it doesn't unravel. Use our, you can see it here, use our crimpers to crimp the end of that so it doesn't come off. Now we can wrap it around the bottom and recheck our brakes, make sure everything's all right. Okay, no rubbing. Pull back on the brake handle about halfway, engages the brake pads to the rim. Looks pretty good to me. Someone asked me, well what does this do? Well if you screw this in, you'll get a shorter reach for smaller hands. Okay, for our next episode of this old bike, we'll tackle the front and rear shifting. and Maybe we'll get a new seat so we can get out on the road. Stay tuned. This is Tony and Tony Ken Speed Safe Cycling.